So again, I'd like to thank you all for coming, and uh, from very long distances, even from Iceland and Hawaii, England, and many countries in Europe. We all come to celebrate this beautiful night of union, the night when Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi reached union with the beloved. And tonight we join together with other groups all over the world at the same time because there are no time zones with God. For all of us in this circle, it's also a special celebration since we have recently found a suitable place for us all to meet, to work, and pray together here in Zurich, and thus be able to open the door to all true seekers. The center is not some sort of exclusive space, far from it. It is a center with an open door, the open door of the heart. And for those of you who do not yet know us, we welcome you into the circle. There is no separation, since the circle has no circumference, and the center is in each one of us. And may we all be of service there in the way of love, compassion, and service. And may the words of the chalice prayer you just heard become part of us and radiate out into a waiting world. Some of you may wonder why I am not personally standing on the post this year and participating actively in the ceremony as I've done every year in the past for over 22 years all over the world. In fact, it's the first time I've not stood on the post, acting as an appointed sheikh since I was initiated into the Mevlevi path by Sheikh Suleiman Dedi. It is not that I have retired, but for all of us there have been many changes this past year, and for me it has been a time to hand over many of my previous responsibilities. So to answer this question, and perhaps to clear up any misunderstandings that may have arisen over the past years since the days of Johanneshof in Switzerland, I would like to tell you a story. And the story is about a great tree whose roots go back to the beginning of time. Now we all know that any tree that grows and finally is here to bear fruit must, first of all, have to have strong roots struck deep into the earth so that the food of time the food of time can become the nurturing substance of the tree. Let us remember that the cause of the tree is the fruit. So this tree planted deep into the earth, which we call the tree of unity, has moved on up through the earth from the first seed that was ever planted, turning towards the light, the morning of our lives. On this blessed night, we are witnesses to that tree which was once again seen in Konya, Anatolia, over 700 years ago. It was not the first time. This tree grew and grew, and many branches spread out, providing shelter for the birds, the animals, and the people who came to sit under this tree of unity. As the tree grew, so did the fruits begin to be seen. The tree of unity brings the religion of love. Beauty is the expression of love. Love's fruits are beautiful. Thirty years ago, I personally witnessed and tasted of that fruit when I visited Konya. Seven years later, when Dedi came to visit us in the States, he came carrying with him the kirka, the robe of my initiation, and the CK, which tonight you see on the post, symbolized by the red sheepskin. This was the CK, which in the Sufi tradition represents the tombstone based on the symbolic words, die before ye die. And the green windings came from the same windings on the CK that Dede was given at the time of his own initiation, perhaps over 40 years before my own. What an extraordinary story, how the invisible line of this path has traveled on since that time. When I was personally asked to bring the turn, the Sema, and the teachings to the West, I had no idea what would happen. And yet since that first day when I was initiated, that line has moved on, 
across the states and Canada, Mexico, Hawaii, and further still to Australia, and many other countries in the world, and still further on it will travel, the inevitable move to complete the circle of love. Thirteen years ago, I was invited to come to Switzerland, carrying that same CK with me, the CK you see on the past tonight. I could never have done all this by myself. My personal thanks are to the one and to all of you all over the world for helping to link up the invisible force of love. After all, there are many worlds within the world that we see and witness. Now a new tree has started to grow in Europe from that one tree of unity. There is a new generation of seekers who will, we pray, find shelter under that tree, and the turn continues, helping to add the ingredient for real transformation. I sometimes describe this ingredient as though it is like yogurt culture, placed into already warmed milk, which can then at the right time turn the milk into yogurt. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings, said, milk is knowledge. True knowledge comes out of the realization of our dependence upon the one creator of all life. The little miracle is that if we were to take one tiny spoonful of this yogurt and add it to milk already warmed, new yogurt will be formed. And then it can be carried, but very, very carefully, all over the world to those who are ready to hear, ready to listen, ready to taste. Yogurt may look or taste different, dependent upon its flavor, or even because of the color of the jar that contains it, but it is still yogurt. In the same way, the fruit of the tree of unity is the cause, under whichever label it may be known. As a great Sufi master once said, the knowledge of oneself inevitably leads to love, which surely is the first cause. In this knowledge, finally all separation is dissolved in love. The roots of the tree, the trunk, the branches and the fruit are at last finally seen to be one universal expression of the unity. The Sikhi on the past tonight where for so many years I once stood represents the fruits of the tree beyond all form and comparison in this relative world. For the supreme vision of Sufism is to see God everywhere, to view every part of creation as a reflection of God's glory. The poet Jami writes, every branch and leaf and fruit reveals some aspect of God's perfection. The cypress gives hint of his majesty, the rose gives tidings of his beauty. Every atom was created by God so that man could know the highest truth and learn the secrets of love. The Sufis honor all traditions, seeing each as a path leading to the highest truth, and thus they also honor the prophets of these traditions. For example, Al-Halaj, the great Sufi mystic, who was crucified for saying, An al haq I am the truth, was known to see and realize Jesus as the embodiment of perfect love. Just as in the same way the Sufis see Muhammad as the seal of the prophets to whom God sent the key of all treasures that are upon the face of the earth. And to complete, I would like to finish with a, a prayer from the Celtic tradition. And this will be followed by a poem I wrote especially for tonight. O God, who brought me from the rest of last night unto the joyous light of this day, be thou bringing me from the new light of this day unto the guiding light of eternity. O oh, from the new light of this day unto the guiding light of eternity. The lake was calm, just a slight breeze touching the water like a hand stroking velvet. The setting sun was misty red, the planet turned. 
flying home, a swan flew across the darkening sky for a moment, cutting the sun in half. Turning, what joy, what beauty he brings us each day and night. Wheresoe'er ye turn, there is the face of God. Tonight, I bow with you all in this world, but I turn to the next. Thank you.